Okay, so this is a video game review for Shogun Total War for the PC. This game was released around 1999, and for me, it was really the first strategy game to give you easy control over large-scale armies of hundreds of men. This game, set in the in 1500s Japan, was not only set during a very interesting time period historically, something that I didn't know too much about, but as Creative Assembly's first real foray uh, into the series, definitely the title, um, they, they really had the battle system nailed, and it's something that hasn't changed all that much through the years. Something for the better, really, because you know, even back then it still worked like really well. The game campaign starts with a nice uh, cutscene introduction, which introduces you to the main the game's main con uh, concepts and really sets up, uh, you up to enjoy what the game has to offer. I I see cutscene introductions very much like viewing a house that you're interested in buying. If the first thing you see in the case of a house is the front of the house, in the case of the game is the introduction. If the first thing that you see isn't interesting, comprehensible, or engaging not necessarily qualities that you refer to a house with, but for games as cutscenes, then you're really not set up well to enjoy the rest of the game. Just like if you, you're you viewing a house and the front of it is just a dump, a tip, then you really don't really want to go into it. So, likewise, this game does it well though, and starts off on the right foot. The introduction not only sets out the nature of Japan's political turmoil, but hints at foreign help in the future, the usefulness of assassinations and removing enemy generals, and hits all the right buttons when it finishes with the words let total war begin you're already pretty pumped up for what's to come so to begin with your campaign starts with you picking one of several cam uh, clans each with various advantages and different starting positions following this you're taken to the map screen where you can view your settlements each province is attached to a different battlefield and the provinces vary in terms of the type of farm yields they bring in, whether or not they are suitable sites for armories. More strategically, some provinces have rivers running through, as you'll see in a in a second, that make uh, either defence a doddle or attack an absolute nightmare. Once a castle is built, and either a dojo or a military building constructed, you can start recruiting units for a set price and can produce only one unit per turn. Now, as you can see, this is the battle mode. I'm going to come back to this in a minute, just talk about it, but j just very briefly, it works. I mean, that's pretty much all I have to say about the battle. It just, it works, and that's something that a lot of other games uh, have not necessarily done right. Now, the... Let's see, the... Uh, Every every four years or so you get your harvest income and you can upgrade your dojos to produce better troops and different unit types and everything. And the best units I found weren't necessarily military units but the, the geishas. They were just so useful for assassinating enemy daimos. It was, um, they were great honestly. I didn't find that out until like playing like the fourth campaign through. So the fact that I played that many campaigns should tell you that it's um, it's an engaging enough game. Uh, the the battle mode handles very well indeed, and it's still very playable today. As I said, it's it's not changed all that much. It's re re received facelifts, but generally speaking, the troop morale, tiredness, defending high positions, and weather all these factors to consider are still uh, were very very strong in this game. And the speed dial as well to move things along is also was also a very welcome feature. A problem, other than replaying certain maps over and over again, was that you could find yourself uh, in certain situations where cavalry units would just kind of run around and they wouldn't retreat but they'd rather hang around and you'd have to chase them around for the field for minutes and this could be quite annoying especially if you wiped out the rest of their army. The ends of the battle see your men and generals gain rank usually following victories which make them fight even better in subsequent battles. As I said before most of the total war aspects were that we've come to take for granted were present in this very first game, which is commendable. For me, the risk style map is easily the game's biggest flaw in my opinion. Some players may like it, I however find it means that defending those border provinces in subsequent turns and so revisiting the same battlefield time and time again ad nauseum can be really boring. The second problem is that enemy attacks can take you completely by surprise 
and as you just hit end turn and they all just attack you and while some players may relish that challenge I find it's a system which is pretty merciless and doesn't reward skill but rather you can lose your best province without any opportunity of mounting a simple defense and because a neutral clan is suddenly gone to war with you. The cutscenes for the ninja assassinations as you saw um, and new Daimo are all very nicely done uh, although the diplomacy is pretty much non-existent in this game um, I mean it's always been pretty piss poor for the Total War games but it's, it's very much limited to just to so-called alliances and ceasefires but you gotta find their Daimo and that can take many turns of just wandering around the map it's uh, not the best of s situations. The music is all very well done indeed as uh, the, the commentator comments at the end of battles and things uh, whether or not your enemy general has fled like a whipped dog or um, or it's your own general. The art style has done very well, the polish and the finish of the game is also of a high standard but the lack of strategy options in the out of battle strategy section of the game coupled with the risk style movement of the pieces and the repetitive battlefields all marks against the game. Later innovations such as Christianity and Gunpowder which don't overpower the experience add a slight flavour to the game's dynamics and there are plenty of historical battles which you'll see in a second which you can engage in also. Um, I suppose as I said the, the diplo uh, diplomacy um, situation is you can overlook it in this game because pretty much everyone's at war with each other but in later games it becomes a real problem and they should have really introduced something like a some sort of relation system like in the paradox games it's a real pain in the ass but in this one it doesn't feature too much so it's not so much of a problem except when you're trying to make peace and you can't find the enemy Daimo. As I said the gunpowder uh, units don't overpower the experience either so they're quite quite nice um, quite a nice thing and as you can see there's there's winter there's summer there's different seasons to the game and it's all done very nicely and it looks it still looks fine it might look like little ants sort of wandering around but it just uh, it worked just perfectly in a sense and you could always tell what units were which so that was nice so to conclude Shogun Total War is a watermark game for the massive scale strategy combat genre and it was innovative, it was simple to play, and is a series that I personally don't want to see the back of just yet. Shogun Total War in many ways revitalized the strategy genre, and for the first game in the series had many things going for it. Its positives outweigh the negatives, and unlike some games, you can still pick up and play this game so long as you can put up with the board game style movement. It was a well-designed title which truly deserves its benchmark status. In conclusion, I give this game a respectable 7 out of 10. And that's me.